Hello, my little yarnivores and spiderettes. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. And today we're going to do something mm, a little bit different, a little bit the same. You know, it depends on how you look at it. I do that a lot. At any rate, we are going to construct a poncho. It's a one-piece poncho with a, just a minimal amount of sewing. It's really easy. And the beauty of this poncho is that you can actually use, technically speaking, whatever stitch you want, provided, of course, that the edges of your piece are straight edges. That's really the only requirement that you really need. Now, what I did was, because you know I love the granny stitch, I wanted to utilize the granny stitch for this piece because it works up fast and also if you want it's a great stash buster as you all know <clears throat> so what i did is for this piece i used vanna's choice no not sponsored but you know i like to share and this was the colorway of dusty green i love the earth tones and i used a fair number of skeins for this piece actually because it measures approximately 16 inches wide by approximately 58 inches in length okay and you're doing the width as you go and you're creating it longer and longer as you go sort of like a really wide scarf okay and so i think i used i want to say maybe Mm, I think this is the fourth skein. It's still attached at the moment. Um, I think this is maybe the fourth skein, third or fourth skein of this particular yarn. You can use whatever yarn you want. You can use whatever hook size you want, just as long as the dimensions are roughly, like I said, 16 by 58. Now, of course, some of you are bigger than I am. Some of you are smaller than I am. That's the beauty of life. By the way, for this, I did use a size I 5.5 millimeter hook, and I'm going to be using it for my little demo. Now, you may need this, shall I say, really wide scarf, you know, that's rather long, uh, to be bigger or smaller. You can adjust the measurements by all means, you know, so that it'll fit you better. Um, I'm just giving you more or less a formula how you can do this. Now, yes, you can also, like I said, use different stitches. Um, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do this. Very similar to how I approached the kimono shawl several moons ago. Um, very, very similar in concept. And, uh, you know, it's really, it's really quite easy. Okay. Now for this piece, I'm going to be using, uh, just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to be using the loops and threads impeccable yarn. It's also a worsted weight yarn. It's what I had in my stash. So I'm going to use this to show you how to do the stitch in case you don't already know. And then we'll get down to the good stuff. All right. So without further ado, let's get started. Alrighty. So for your base chain, obviously you're going to do more chains than this. For your base chain, if you want to do the granny stitch, uh, you are going to need multiples of three plus one. Now, if you want the same number of clusters that I had for my width, which was 14 clusters, you would need a total of 43 chains, okay? Um, for this, I just did 13 chains, you know. Uh, it's a multiple of three plus one, so I've got 13, uh, or you could do the 43. I'm just trying to make this nice and easy for you guys. Now, of course, also, like I said before, you can use whatever stitch you want as long as the dimensions are approximately the same. Now, also keeping in mind that the, the width of your piece, this is going to be basically uh, from your neckline and going downwards, okay? So picture how, how long you want it to be down your back. Now, for mine, it was approximately 16 inches, which for me, that worked. For you, you might want to do more. Um, this is one of those things where it's a formula. It's not an exact science. Also because, yes, we are all different sizes. So after doing your chain of a multiple of three plus one stitch, we're going to go into the fourth chain from the hook with two double crochets. Really, really quite simple. 
That's why I love this stitch so much, because it is so simple. So we have, technically speaking, three double crochets. Then you chain one, skipping two chains, going into that third chain with three double crochets. It's all about the clusters. Now, obviously, I'm not going to have quite as many clusters as the green piece that I showed you just before, um, which, you know, that's, like I said, uh, 14 clusters, but we're doing what we can. So after doing your three double crochets, you chain one, skipping two chains, going into the third with three more double crochets. And so obviously you would do this a bunch more times than I'm doing this right now. Then you chain one, skip two more chains going into that last chain with three double crochets. And also what I love about this is that it's only a two row repeat. So nice and simple. So that's the end of the first row. Okay, now for the second row, very simple. Chain up four, one, two, three, four, turn the work, and we're going to go working directly into this chain one space with three double crochets. Because we got a nice big old loop right there. So three double crochets into that chain one space, chain one into the next chain one space, three double crochets. Now for those of you that are only too familiar with this stitch, I apologize, but some of you may not be, so that's why I'm doing this. <clears throat> okay, so chain one, and then into the next chain one space, three double crochets. Okay. And then to create the big loop that we had on this side onto this side, chain one, and then into this first chain right here, we're going to double crochet into the top chain right there, right here. And yes, it can be a little bit tricky, especially with this first row, but it gets easier as you go. All right, so going into there with a double crochet and that is two full rows. Now I did a total of 87 of these rows. Okay, now of course you may need fewer, you may need more. Okay, whatever works for you naturally. Um, you know, and instead of these four clusters, I had a total of 14 clusters for my base width. Uh, we're going to do a couple more repeats just so that I know you got it. And uh, we'll go from there. Alrighty? Okay. Alrighty. So to repeat this pattern, really quite simply, you would then chain up three. One, two, three. Turn your work. And going into this chain one space, two double crochets. Like so. So technically speaking, you have three double crochets. Chain one, into the next chain one space, three doubles. Okay, chain one, three more doubles into the next chain one space. chain one, and three doubles into the last chain space. And of course, I have myself a little knot. Isn't that convenient? <laughs> there we go. All right. So I got my three doubles into the last chain space. So we need to create a new chain space. So for the second row, of the repeat, because this is row one, row two. We did row one, now for row two again. Chain four, one, two, three, and four. 
turn the work, and then three double crochets into this chain space. Like so, chain one, three double crochets into the next chain space. And so you can see we have some nice straight edges, you know, on all four sides. That's really what you need. You know, you can do whatever stitch you want, but for instance, this piece would not work well with chevrons, okay? Because you got all these crazy edges going on. I love the stitch, but it would not work well for this project. So it's really just a matter of chaining one, three double crochets, chaining one, three double crochets, and then when you reach the last cluster, chain one and double crochet into this last chain. See, this one's a little bit easier than the first round. See? A little bit easier. Ta-da! And so we've got two repeats right there. Let's do one more, just because. So you chain up three, turn the work, two more double crochets into that chain space for a total of three doubles. Chain one, three doubles into the next chain one space. Chain one, three doubles into the next chain one space. Put some more yarn here. There we go. I mean, also, you could do this piece using a uh, fillet crochet, all in singles, all in doubles, you know, preferably something that has some flow to it. You know, something that's not quite too stiff. Like, I wouldn't suggest Tunisian, necessarily. You know, like a regular standard Tunisian for this. Not offhand. So after doing your chain one, three doubles into the last chain space. You know, something with some nice drape to it. All right. So that is the end of that row. Let's do one more. So you would again chain four, turn the work, three doubles into the next chain space, like so, chain one, three doubles into the next chain space. Chain one, three doubles into the next chain space. Chain one, and double crochet into the last chain, top of the last chain right there. Shaboom. Now I did 87 rows. See, right now, this is an even number. We got two, four, and six. So how I personally did it, I ended on an odd number. So chaining up three, two more double crochets into that chain space initially, because we need our three doubles. Chain one. Three double crochets into the next chain space. Chain one, three doubles into the next chain space. Chain one, and three doubles into the last chain space. <clears throat> now, the reason why I decided to do an odd number is for the sake of the 
piece looking more uniform, where you have solid corners and solid corners, where you begin and where you end. That's just my personal preference. You can do whatever it is that you want. I'm just, you know, <laughs> I'm just giving you what I personally did, my personal suggestion, and also you may choose to do another stitch entirely for this project, but I'm just showing you what I personally did, okay? So, after you have your piece made, which again would be in approximation 16 inches by about 58 inches, um, also, like I said, you may need to make this piece longer, you may have, you know, broader shoulders, um, you know, uh, etc, etc, um, so you may need to make this wider. Now, what you can do, um, I'm going to show you how to connect the piece, okay? What you can do is to loosely crochet the piece closed, okay, uh, to see if it's big enough, if it's the right size for you. Um, you know, just like loosely crochet it closed. So that way, um, you know, you don't have to stitch it and then, oh, you know, it, it's not the right size. What do I do? And then you have to take out all of those uh, sewn stitches and try it again. No, there there is a way of doing it such that you can sort of baste it first and see, oh, does this fit? You know, it's a lot easier that way, okay? And I'm going to show you how to do that. Alrighty. Alrighty, so when your piece is more or less worked out to the dimensions that you need, all you have to do is to see if it is approximately the right size, we're going to by the way, I'm, I'm on the floor right now, sort of trying to scooch myself into proper position. Basically, what we're doing is we are arranging our piece so that we can see if it's going to be the right dimensions. Just sort of folding it over and so forth. Now, I need to just do a little bit more this way, and then there we go. So more or less how this works is this is the neck opening and so the neckline is right up here and these are the sections that drape across the front, okay? So now, and this is the tip that hangs in the front. Now, uh, the reason why I'm doing this is on the floor is because it's a lot easier to show you. Now, what you can do from here is you can loosely crochet this side and this side together through the loopholes, which I'm going to show you how to do, before you actually stitch them closed. That way you can see, oh, should I make this piece bigger? Um, should I make it smaller? Etc. Etc. Now what I mentioned before, as far as the initial width being uh, from the neck downward, that's what I meant, you know, because this is what's showing on the back of the piece, okay? So I'm going to show you how to connect these two pieces in sort of like a basting stitch fashion so that, you know, if it's not the right size, you can undo it and you can keep crocheting, okay? It's really quite that easy, all right? So let's get stitching. All right, so I'm back in my room and I have my two sides that I wanted to stitch together doing sort of, like I said, a basting stitch, if you will. Um, what I really needed to do, though, was to show you, you know, how it's laid out, how, you know, you connect it from what side to what side in order for what I'm doing now to make any sort of sense, okay? So I have my two sides, and as far as connecting them, it's really quite simple, you know? You don't want this to be a permanent deal, you know? This is just sort of, you know, quick and messy, if you will. So after you have, see, this is where I left off my row, was it 58, I think it was? 57. And so from here, all you need to do is go into your other side that you're connecting into. And you can do that with a, a slip stitch, a single crochet, it really doesn't matter, you know. And so we have this space here and this space here, okay. So what I'm doing is chaining up a three and then going through both holes from either piece, you know, from both sides, okay? Going through both holes with a single crochet, chain three, 
come on. And then lining up both layers again, as you can see, going through both with a single crochet. And this is not this is not to you know look pretty. This is meant to function right now. Okay, so chaining up a three. You know, just like if you were doing a basting stitch with sewing, it's like, no, this, this is going to be removed. <laughs> so I'm lining up my two layers again. Sorry for the muddled background here. So lining up my two layers, going through both layers with a single crochet. And that's really what you're going to be doing until both of these pieces here and here are completely connected. And if you find that it is the right size for you, great. Then you can just undo this sort of basting stitch, if you will. You know, it's just a matter of chain three and then lining up your two layers, going through the holes of both layers. Um, you know, you can undo these stitches that we're doing right now and then you can sew your pieces together. You know, it's really not a lot of sewing in the grand scheme of things, it's just one seam. And then your piece is done. Now, I'm almost there. And I'm going to be taking these stitches out, actually, because I'm going to be sewing this closed. But I wanted to show you how it is that I determined, you know, is this piece big enough for me or not? You know, that way you can do this, try it on real quick, and see for yourself. You know, do you need more rows? I had to do this several times before I found that it was the, the right length for me. Okay, and one more. Do, do, do. And right into here. Shaboom. Do, do, do. Okay, and then I've reached a solid and a solid. So I can just sort of go right in there. And there you go. So going to kind of sort of lay this out for you so that you can see what I'm talking about. It's a little bit tricky. Okay. So as I had it laid out before in my living room, see this corner to this corner right here okay and so that's it's just sort of loosely stitched together very easy to undo and that way you can see you know is the piece big enough is it going to fit me if so great just undo the stitches and then sew this together and uh, if not hey keep going it's quite all right you know, sometimes it takes a little bit of trial and error. By the way, yes, this point was the point down in front. Um, you know, sometimes it just takes a little bit of finagling with a, you know, more or less a fitted garment, and that's okay. Um, you know, this is more, more of like a, a formula than an exact pattern, but I wanted to share with you exactly what I did to obtain the results that I ended up getting, okay? So listen, ah, that's a mouthful. <laughs> so listen, I really hope that you enjoyed this sort of tutorial formula, whatever it is that you wish to call it, on how to make this poncho. And, uh, you know, if you did enjoy it, please give me a little thumbs up button down below. And also, I would love to hear your comments. Uh, and also, uh, if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe, because I do try to post videos as often as I can whether it be crocheting, knitting, audiobook, narration, or on my other channel, Fiber Spider Games, video game playthrough, and commentary. Yeah, Oof, that's a mouthful. 
So until next time, stay inspired, stay caffeinated, and above all, stay stitching. I love you guys, and I will see you in my next video. Bye for now. Thank you.